Okay, so in this video, we want to review uh, limits at infinity, but only simple cases. And you'll understand why when we try to find the area under a curve using limits of Riemann sums. So this review will come in very handy. And I won't use x, I'll use n. Again, the variable doesn't matter, but I'll use n because we will use n later. So you can think of those as just sequences. So suppose we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of, say, 3n plus 1 over 2n minus 5. We have an infinity over infinity case, but we do not want to think of L'Hopital's rule here because we can always do better. Every time you have a limit of a polynomial over a polynomial in, well, in this case n, but any other variable, all you have to do to find the answer in one line is multiply top and bottom by 1 over the largest power of n. Here it is 1, so we just multiply by 1 over n over 1 over n. We're not cheating here as 1 over n over itself is 1, and if we multiply through, we'll have the answer in just one line. So 3 over n, 3n times 1 over n is 3, plus 1 times 1 over n is 1 over n, over 2n times 1 over n, 2 minus 5 over n. And now you can see the limit is trivial. As n goes to infinity, 1 over n and 5 over n both shrink to 0. And we're left with 3 over 2. And that's it. And so no matter w how large the polynomials may be, you will always have a one-line solution. Divide top and bottom by the largest power of n. Let's do one more short example. Suppose we have 2n squared minus 5n plus 6 over n cubed plus 3n plus 1. Now here, if you notice, there is a dilemma. The largest power of n on top is 2, n squared. On the bottom is n cubed. So which one do we use? Do we do 1 over n squared over itself, or 1 over n cubed over itself? The answer is, it doesn't matter. And let's do both simultaneously to show you that it never matters. As long as you either single out the greatest power of n on top or on the bottom, you'll be good to go. So let's do 1 over n squared over 1 over n squared here. Now let's do 1 over n cubed over 1 over n cubed. And you'll see in both cases will be done in one line. So if you multiply across by 1 over n squared, this will leave you with 2 minus 5 over n plus 6 over n squared. Same thing here. You'll be left with n plus 3 over n plus 1 over n squared. So 5 over n, 6 over n squared, 3 over n, 1 over n squared, they all shrink to 0 as n goes to positive infinity. And now think of what you're left with. 2 over n so you have a 2 over infinity case, which is, of course, 0. And that's it. Let's see what happens in this case. So multiply across by 1 over n cubed. And so you'll get on the numerator 2 over n minus 5 over n squared plus 6 over n cubed over, same thing here, multiply across by 1 over n cubed over 1 plus 3 over n squared, plus 1 over n cubed. Now, 2 over n, 5 over n squared, 6 over n cubed, 3 over n squared, 1 over n cubed, they all shrink to 0. And we're left with 0 over 1, which is, of course, 0. You see, the one difference is we had, in the end, a different case. We had here a 2 over infinity, which is 0. Here we had a 0 over 1, which is 0 either case, we arrive at the same answer in one line. Now, one last set of examples, and it's really a word of caution. When things are factored, 
don't multiply them out unless you absolutely have no other options. Let me show you why, or what I mean by this. Suppose I give you the limit, as n goes to infinity, of 2n plus 1 times 3n plus 4 times 7n minus 1 over n cubed. So you could do here, as we've done before, there's the n cubed, so 1 over n cubed, 1 over n cubed, multiply this out, and then times 1 over n cubed. But if we're clever, we can save ourselves the whole multiplication. Rewrite n cubed as n times n times n and pair up these terms. You can see there's an n here times an n times an n. This is roughly n cubed. So we'll have 2n plus 1 over n times 3n plus 4 over n times 7n minus 1 over n. And now if you divide across by n each term, you'll have a trivial limit. No need to multiply these out. So here you'll have 2 plus 1 over n times 3 plus 4 over n times 7 minus 1 over n. And now the limit is trivial. As n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0, so does 4 over n. And we're left with 2 times 3 times 7, which of course is 32. Oh, sorry, not 32, 42, my bad. And there you go. So don't multiply out unless you absolutely have to. If you look at just the number of terms, again, here we had one linear factor of n, another one, another one. So that was essentially just n times n times n over the same number. So by pairing them up, you can save yourself a lot of work instead of multiplying things out. And you can imagine here, if we had six terms that were linear factors of n over n to the six, multiplying out would be rather unpleasant. So pair up each term with an n, divide through, and then you have a trivial limit. And so with this little review, you'll be able to handle quite easily the limits of Riemann sums when we tackle the problem of finding the area below a curve.